guys, Lemmy here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be reviewing a watercolor palette made by Royal Talons. It's called Van Gogh. Before I get too ahead of myself, I'm just going to flat out read what is on the box and what they're presenting for us, the buyer. And this is this is what I bought this uh, <laughs> this palette based on. On the front of the box, it says 24 pans. On the back of the box, it says 24 pans Van Gogh watercolor, and then it lists all of the colors. You guys can read that on your own. I also have pictures of the actual palettes and the close-up uh, shot in the, the actual visual of the video. Um, there are two Van Gogh brushes, and it says here series 191 number four and series 171 number eight. A mixing palette and then it says it's also made in the Netherlands and over here it says Van Gogh is the brand for serious artists with an eye for quality the watercolor paint of Van Gogh is a brilliant and intense paint that is very transparent all colors have the highest degree of light fastness due to the purity of the colors are easy to mix and wash to create the tiniest of differences in shade the entire range of Van Gogh watercolor consists of 40 colors and is available in 10 milliliter tubes and pans. The practical wooden watercolor box contains 24 pans, a large mixing palette, and two brushes. And that is what is on the box, and that's what we're going to look at today. So just to start off, I wanted to just say that you could get this same I got the wooden palette but you can get the same palette but a metal tin kind of what traditionally more companies go with that that tin that looks like every other tin I think it might even be a dark blue which is pretty um, but I saw that it also came in a wooden box and I figured I don't have a wooden box for my watercolors and it would be kind of cool to have a wooden box for my watercolors because at this point I have so many from doing all these reviews I figured eh why not sounds fancy no opening this up I found a few things that I was immediately very disappointed in and uh, <laughs> all right so I guess I'm kind of picky about things people I've had reviews and people say like you're being too harsh and the thing is is that if I'm reviewing something I'm looking at it critically it's not that I go into something liking something or disliking something except for in the case of my Sakura Koi watercolors I have used them before and I do like them so I already went into it knowing I was going to like the product otherwise I'm really kind of like I don't have an opinion until I actually try it so I, I open it up and the first thing that I notice is that the mixing well is plastic and I thought it was porcelain and porcelain palettes are obviously more expensive than plastic but the listing that I purchased it on on Amazon was not specific if it was plastic or porcelain so it just led my mind to believe that it was porcelain so I was really like super disappointed and I did look up porcelain palettes to see if you could replace that with an actual porcelain palette and I think that you can if those Amazon listings actually are porcelain because I looked through those listings and people are like I bought this because it said porcelain palette but it's actually plastic and so I don't know I don't know where all the porcelain palettes are at but the one that you're getting in this this box is plastic and it, it's kind of disappointing it is replaceable you can move the little metal pieces on the edge and you can take it out and put something else in if you don't like it but I was just pretty sad about that uh, with that being said everything is removable from the box this can be a good thing but it can also be a bad thing so inside the wooden box if you were to pick this up and travel with it and go to school it is study grade you know student grade paint you want to take it with you you want to go to school and study everything inside is going to be moving around including that plastic well except that it's attached to that side so it's not going to be falling on top of the other supplies but it will be moving around because there is space on the other side also the the little tin part that holds the paint also moves around 
the brushes move around. And when you undress all of the little pans and you put them into the metal tin piece, all of the pans will move around. So I've been very gentle with this, but at one point I accidentally like must have like moved my hand a little suddenly. I opened up the wooden palette and all of the little half pans were just everywhere. So this is really not suitable for travel. It is a wooden box. I wouldn't think you would travel with it, but what is cool is that the little metal piece, you can stick that into pretty much any metal tin for 24 pans of watercolor. I mean half pans. You just take that out and stick it in and it will fit right in. I tried it with my Schmanko one the other day. It just, it worked perfectly fine. So if you want to travel, I suggest having a metal tin um, and also taking, now this is what I do normally when the tins don't, or the pans don't stay in the tin. I'll take like, um, cause I always need, I always need paper towel. So I'll roll up a piece of paper towel and I'll set that on top before closing up the palette. And that will keep all the pans inside the metal, the metal pieces or else they'll just go everywhere. And that nice swatch I made, like once the pans start moving around, then you have to figure out where they go. In this situation, each pan is labeled so that you can refill them easily and kind of reorganize them easily and get like less confused, which I'm a fan of. I really like it when companies do that so that I don't have to write on the pan itself what color it is because that gets annoying and then the ink will kind of rub off with the water and then you have this smudge and you're like, well, what color is this? So I'm happy that they had the forethought of doing that. However, on the box, they said 24 pans. And as you know, I can be kind of critical sometimes. Are they half pans or full pans? Because if someone tells me pans, I automatically think a full pan. That's like someone like being like a person, I think of one, one person. And then being like, no, I meant a half of a person. Like they cut them in half and it's just their legs. Like I wouldn't normally think that, you know? So when they say 24 pans, I expect 24 full pans. But from the images that I saw, I knew that they were half pans. But at the same time, why wouldn't they just write half pan? Like I think, especially if it's a student grade, if kids really don't know what they're buying, they should kind of be more specific about it. Honestly, the more dulled down and dumb things are and like obvious, the better. You should be telling people exactly what they're getting. So before I get too far into what I'm gonna talk about next, I just wanna to continue to talk about the wooden box and the issues that I've had with the wooden box. And um, I've noticed that the hinges, normally hinges on a door, you can use a screwdriver and you can remove the hinges or tighten the hinges if the hinges become loose. There's absolutely nothing you can do with the hinges of this box. So for some reason, your box breaks, you're pretty much screwed and that's it. Like there's nothing I could see that like you could tighten it if it was getting loose or anything like that. So that makes me like a little bummed out. I mean, not that I think anything's gonna happen to it, but it very mel very well, very mel, very well might happen and you don't really have anything you can do to fix it. Maybe it's just held in there with glue. So if it pops out, you can just glue it back in. I don't know. I can't tell by looking at the box. So that I'm kind of not very happy with. Also, the metal part of the tin really does not hold the pans. And I know I, I mentioned this, but no matter how much you tighten it, it doesn't get a better grip at all. And I find that certain shapes, cause certain half pans have thicker ends to them or will be held in better by the metal tins. Like even if it's a little bit, these will like, I'll have it as tight as possible. They'll just slip on out. So that's like really kind of annoying. So you have to be careful about that. It's not a deal breaker for me, but it is, it is annoying and I don't like being annoyed. There is enough space where you can stick an extra half pan on each side. I did try to put half pans in the middle section and that was really forced. 
they didn't really fit very well in the middle section so I wouldn't exactly recommend it unless you're desperate and you have like your metal tin not the wooden one and you're traveling and you need that extra color they don't really fit in very well so I would use that space probably just for a brush or something like that. I only have like one more complaint about the palette itself and that is that my Van Gogh brush came with the hair bent back because they put the little plastic cap on it and they didn't do it perfectly and I like to keep my art supplies forever. So I'm always very careful to make sure all of the, all the bristles are forward and nothing's bent back and everything is taken care of and it's all nice. But like that, that one hair was bent back and I was like, oh, like they sent this to the wrong person. Like this really bothers me. So yeah. It actually wasn't too horrible because they didn't use that crazy glue. Not that it's actually crazy glue, because that's a brand. It's just like a glue that they use to put on the bristles to keep them straight. They didn't use any of that glue. So it's not like it was really like super difficult to kind of push back into shape. At the same time, I feel like I need to go condition it and, and try to make it happy again because it's all like disgruntled but it's not it's not too horrible um it just annoyed me seeing that i guess but it wasn't as bad as it could have been i i guess is what i want to say here so we're gonna move onward and actually talk about the watercolors now i know exciting right you listen to me complain for like 10 minutes um the watercolors, I love them. I think they're amazing. They're really, really great and they're really cheap. So if you got a palette like me and then you wanted to replace the colors, you could buy the tubes because all 40 of the colors come in individual tubes. They also come in tube sets so that once you're done using one color, you can just refill it with, you know, the proper color of that tube. I will say <clears throat> that these are student grade because I know that they say they are, but what really stands out to me is the lifting. They lift a lot. And it's not that this is necessarily a bad thing. And lifting is when you can put down a color, let it dry, and then you're coming back and you're doing some other watercolor things, whether it's glazing or like putting some brush strokes down it will lift up the color that you already put down. And I know watercolor reactivates with water, that's what it's meant to do, but you really see a lot of this with, uh, with especially student grade paint. And I could really have a full drawing and then pretty much scrub the whole thing up and have like a really like pastel, <laughs> like, light color going on like it's just it there's so much lift to these paints so much so that i went to their website and they they actually talk about it in like the frequently asked questions section they do admit that some of their paints lift more easily than others and then they they went on to say it's like only certain colors but the thing is i went through and i actually did a little you know experiment all the colors lift some more than others they say it's because of the particles and the size of the particles of the paint and like some are bigger some are smaller and the bigger ones are more easily removed with water and whatever you know i'm not a scientist but they do lift so if you are a person that is studying watercolor and you like having the ability to lift and show the white of the paper again because you put too much paint on or something like that or or you went out of the lines that you were trying to color in you can scrub up that paint and and fix your mistakes this might be a good option for you for me, I find it really frustrating because I like to have a lot of like very thin layers of paint and stack them. And if I keep doing that, then I keep scrubbing up accidentally. Well, I'm not even scrubbing. I keep like sopping up what's beneath so that I'm not getting that, that amount of depth that I want to achieve because I feel like I'm constantly fighting myself. 
And it's really not that bad, but after I've done so many reviews of watercolor, like I tend to sort of notice things. And I definitely will use these again. It's not like it's a deal breaker, but it is something that I did notice. Another thing that I was really excited about was their light fastness ratings because on the box they say that they have excellent light fastness and it is a student grade and that means like you get to keep your art for a long time to come and you don't have to worry about the light you know destroying it as much and and it will just last longer and I'm all for things lasting longer I don't want to make a picture and then in, I don't know, 10 years it looks terrible, and then I can't sell it, or something like that, or maybe I wanna give it as a gift, and then someone else gets it, and then it looks bad. I don't want that to happen, so I care about light fastness. However, each color has three plus marks, and that translates to at least 100 years light fast, which sounds amazing, right? And then they wrote, under museum conditions. So I'm like, I've never actually seen that written on a product before. So I tried to contact them and I was like, well, what does this exactly mean? They never got back to me. So I, I was kind of disappointed about that because I wanted them to explain to me what exactly that means. And I went into like the, um, what do they call it? The uh, ASTM standards it has written here. The thing is, is that I've noticed that there are different standards like on different products. So I tried to like look this up and see what it, what it exactly it was talking about. And then it was talking about like, now this, this is where I went down the rabbit hole and I got freaking lost. They were talking about putting it in an Arizona or Florida window and blah, 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 and all these other conditions to see like how the, the performance of the paints are with the amount of light on them and blah, blah, blah. So then when I looked at under museum conditions, like what does that mean? Does that mean that it performed really terribly on this test of putting it in a window in Arizona? So you have to have a museum house? Or like, what exactly? So it would have been really great if they would have gotten back to me because I emailed them over a week ago, but thanks Van Gogh, you didn't, so now it's in my review. <laughs> Like, I don't know what this means. It sounds spectacular. Each one has great light fast ratings, but what does under museum conditions mean? No one's house is a museum. No one is going to have their paintings hung in museum conditions. So what exactly is going on here? Do I have to archive it? Is it even in the wall of a museum? Or is it like in one of those uh, drawers in a museum? It's like the air conditioned and like, what is, what is this? What does this mean? Someone please explain it to me. I don't really get it because I've never had a watercolor or any, anything else that I can remember because I always read the packaging. I've never had anything say under museum conditions. That really confused me. And so I don't really even know how or how great the ratings actually are because no one else used that terminology before. So that's that's my concern with that. I also did some more research while I was at the website and the series 191 number four is golden synthetic hair and the series 171, which was the one that had the hair out of place, it's also the larger of the two brushes, is a pure red sable brush. I did like the brushes very much. I thought they were pretty good, especially since they're free, I was happy to have them. So we'll just reiterate the transparency of these paints are beautiful. They're, the colors are beautiful. They're just beautiful. And I really love transparent watercolors. I don't really like when they get super opaque. I much prefer them so I can make glazes and stuff like that. The lifting is, is an issue, but you can kind of work around it if you're careful. Um, 
The light fastness sounds amazing, but I'm not really sure if it is because I've never seen under museum conditions tacked on to anything before. Um, and then there comes the price point, which I'm not saying that specifically buying this palette that I have here is specifically the best way to go about getting the paints for the best bang for your buck. I just wanted a set of paints to review. If you are really concerned about actually getting your paints and having um, more of them for a cheaper price, I recommend that you do get the tube watercolors. It won't come with a palette unless you get a set. And then if you get the set, it's more expensive than if you were to buy the tubes individually. And this is just a overall thing that I'm saying right now on this day because I looked at the prices I did the math I calculated each color and what they would cost and then what the what you get in the palette and everything like that I I think that you should buy if you're going to buy these you should buy the ones that are best for your situation so if you want more colors and less of that other stuff like the wooden box and, and the brushes and whatever and the little pans and all that junk. I mean, all you really need is a dish and like tubes and a paintbrush and water and you're good. Um, if you want the big fancy wooden thing, which isn't really that great, you can get that or you can get like the metal tin so you can travel with them and you have to figure out what, what you're looking for, what you want because there are multiple options out there. Even though I did, I did beat up on them quite a bit for their packaging, which I do think their packaging needs a lot of work. They didn't write half pans, they just wrote pans. Their actual literal packaging with, with the brush and the messed up bristle and then like how, <laughs> how they, they have a little palette in there but they don't t say if it's plastic or if it's porcelain, like they just say it's a mixing palette, like okay, well what is it? What's what's under museum conditions? What does this all mean? Like Van Gogh, what does it all mean? I don't know. Um, but then they also like sending in in the message where where you're supposed to have questions about the product and you ask a representative and they just parrot what's already on the website, which doesn't give you any real information that doesn't help us. So they really need to work on their marketing and their packaging and like just telling people what they mean because I don't know what you mean, Royal Talons. What is this? Not to mention they said that, well, our artist brand is Rembrandt. But on their website, they have more than Van Gogh and Rembrandt. They have other watercolors. So I was under the assumption it was like kind of like coal art that sells multiple lines or something like that. I don't know. I don't really get it. Um, and they wouldn't really explain it to me. So that's kind of where we are. However, everything taken into consideration, the colors are very nice. And for the price, they're very nice. Um, on Dick Blick, not that I'm being paid for this or anything, Dick Blick, <laughs> maybe you should. Anyway, um, on Dick Blick, they are like $2.95 per tube. And I've seen other people, and these are 10 milliliter tubes. And that's a really good price. I've also seen other people on websites saying that their local stores have had sales where it's dropped as low as like $1.25 or $1.50 or something like that. I don't know what stores they're shopping at, but like sign me up because I want to go somewhere that has sales like that. That sounds amazing, but um, I've never seen anything online like that. And I kind of searched around for different prices on different websites. I couldn't find anything. If you can find it, let me know. It's probably cheaper if you're in Europe because they are from the Netherlands. So maybe, maybe that's where they're getting that price from. I don't know, it's still very good price for what you're getting. And that's my review. Most of my criticism is, is about the packaging and what they describe the paint as. Because I honestly, this has just raised so many more questions than has given me answers. So uh, yeah, paint's really nice. Just make sure you don't worry about the lifting too much or 
take that into consideration. And uh, as for everything else, I have no idea. I feel like like Van Gogh is a Rubik's Cube to me and I just don't get it. Just don't get it and I'm just gonna accept it. I hope you guys have a wonderful week and that you enjoyed my video and also my artwork. Let me know what you think. Have you tried this brand before? What do you think? What do you think that under museum conditions means? Is that how they were tested? Is that the only place that they actually are light fast? Did they miserably fail the Arizona and the Florida light, light fast test thingies that I found on the internet? Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Let me know what you think. And if you're like, a professional light fast tester like please please just be like spread all the comments into two sections and just walk through the middle and be like listen to me I know things I am like light fast Moses yeah Moses like spread the water right light fastness Moses and just let me know because I don't know what this means <laughs> and I'll talk to you guys next week in another art video I'm going for real bye